Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. Today we're going to talk about sends, returns, and what they are and how to use them. So, what a send and return or an insert is, is it's a way to tap into the signal after the preamp so that you can insert an effect of some kind. You see, most effects units require what's called a line level signal to be input into them. So you can't just plug a microphone directly into it because it's not optimized for that and the signal will be really noisy. So before the signal goes into the effects unit, it needs to go through a preamp to be boosted to line level. Let's take a look at this effects unit. This is a hardware compressor. Now on the back, we have inputs and outputs. So your signal goes in, it does the compression, and sends the signal out. And both of these connectors are an XLR connector. And that's pretty typical to use an XLR jack or a quarter inch jack. But since in this case it's an XLR connector, I can physically plug a microphone right into it. And it'll actually kind of work. The sound will pass through it, but it won't sound as good as it would if the microphone was plugged directly into a preamp and then from the preamp going into the compressor. However, on some preamps, when you plug in your microphone or your guitar, it'll automatically take that signal and route it to the converter and send it into the computer. But in that kind of a signal chain, you're not able to insert that hardware compressor after the preamp because you don't have access to the signal. So to solve this issue, some interfaces have put in what's called an insert or a send and return. And that taps into the signal after it goes through the preamp and routes it to an output on the interface. So you can take that signal from the output, plug it into the input of your compressor, and then on the output of the compressor, you take that signal coming out and you plug it into the send return input of the interface. So on a send return, you always have to have both the send, which sends the signal to the effects unit, and the return, which receives the signal back in from the effects unit. Now the difference between a send return and an insert, although they're very similar, they're slightly different. You see, with an insert, as soon as you plug into the jack, it'll automatically interrupt the signal path and force the audio to go to the send and to the return. Whereas with a send return, it'll be a duplicate of the audio signal that gets sent out, returned, and you can dial in how much of the return signal you want to blend in with the original signal. Now let's take a look at a real life example here. This is a Behringer recording interface. So if I want to plug a microphone into here, I can just go ching, boom, we're plugged in. And as a recording interface, it'll automatically route this microphone signal. You're not hearing this right now, you're hearing me through this microphone right here, but it'll automatically route this microphone signal into the computer and into your DAW. But if I want to plug in this hardware compressor and use that on this microphone signal, the way I would use it is through the inserts. So on the back of this unit, we have the inserts. So there's four inserts, one, two, three, four, and those correspond with the four microphone inputs, one, two, three, four. And on the four microphone inputs, we have our gain knob right here. So the gain controls how much amplification the preamp is gonna put on the microphone. And then as soon as you plug something into these jacks, boom, now the signal coming from the preamp gets interrupted. It no longer goes straight into the computer. Now that signal goes into this insert jack. Now, as we explain in lesson 11 on analog audio cables, a quarter inch jack is capable of carrying two mono signals. So since this can carry two signals, you just plug in a splitter and one end will be the send, the other will be the return. There isn't any industry standard or uniformity on which one is gonna be the send and which one is gonna be the return, but the way that Behringer does it is on the uh, quarter inch connector jack, they use the tip as the send and the ring as the return. So to use the send return, I just plug this in. The audio gets interrupted from the signal path of being sent from the interface to the computer, and now it goes out this. If I just leave these blank, if I leave nothing connected here, then no audio will pass from the microphone into the computer because of the dead end right here. If I just take a cable and plug these into each other without any effects unit, then it'll be the same as not even using this in the first place. So the way I would connect this compressor to use with my microphone as I'm singing is I would plug this in, I would use the send to send that signal into the input of the compressor, and then from the output of the compressor, I would put that into the return jack, and then that'll get routed back into the interface and into my DAW through its respective channel. Now here's another example. Let's take a look at the Universal Audio 4710D. This is a four channel preamp with built-in conversion. So the audio can be converted into digital and then routed into your interface and then routed into your DAW. On the back of this unit, on each preamp channel, there's two jacks, one for a send and one for a return. 
Now, if we look at the front panel, you see there's a selector switch which engages or disengages this insert. This is very convenient because you can leave it connected to an effects unit and use the front panel switch to instantiate it or uninstantiate it. Or you can just use the return as an additional line input and plug any signal you want into it and use the front panel switch to switch between using that channel's built-in preamp or using that channel as a line input. Now, most mixers and most DAWs also have a send return option built into them. What this is, is it's like a mini mixer within the mixer. The aux send will send the signal to an aux bus, which can have several sends going into it. And the aux bus can receive several independent channels of audio, and it blends them all together. On a mixer, that aux channel will have its own dedicated output, and usually it'll have its own dedicated input as well, and that output and input can be used as a send return. So if you plug an effects unit, such as a reverb unit, which is pretty typical, what you can do is control how much from each channel gets sent out into that reverb unit, and then the output of the reverb unit goes into the input of the send return, and blended with the entire mix, but the signal that's being blended in is full of reverb, so you can control how much reverb gets blended into the entire mix from each independent channel. I hope this video helped you out in understanding what sends and returns and inserts are. If you have any questions, please ask away in the comments section down below, that's what it's there for, and I'll try to answer you as quickly as I can. If this video did help you out, please help me out in return and hit that like button for me, it's just that little thumbs up down there, give it a high five, I would really appreciate that. Also, I've got a full audio engineering course and I'm going to be coming out with tons more videos from beginner to advanced. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Just do it right now before you forget so that you can stay up to date and get all the free content that I'm creating for you. So have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.